66 years old. That was the average life expectancy of a Swiss man in 1948, when the pension system was introduced, and the retirement age was set at 65. <laughs> if we were to apply that logic to today's reality, we should be working till we're 81. I'm not suggesting that we work until we're 81. But I do believe that setting the retirement age for most of us at 60-something is having devastating consequences on the way we manage our entire working lives. It's time for a paradigm shift in the way we think about employability, to open up new possibilities for ourselves before and after the age of 65 and make the idea of working for longer actually become appealing. I started thinking about this a few years ago, whilst I was playing with my eldest daughter. She was six at the time, and I asked her what she wants to be when she grows up. And to be honest, I expected her to say something cool, like a ballerina or an astronaut. And instead she said, I want to do what you do, Mum. I was very flattered to start with, and then I realized that she doesn't really know what I do. So I asked her, and what she said was, oh, you sit in meetings, work on the computer, and earn a lot of money so that we can have a nice life. <laughs> it wasn't at all the role model I wanted to be for her. And looking around me at the middle-aged colleagues in banking who'd been sitting in meetings and working on the computer for decades, I realized it wasn't the right role model for me either. It got me thinking, and I decided to do a Master of Science, which led me to write my thesis on lifelong employability. What do we need to do to remain employable for longer, and why aren't we doing it? And before I talk about what we can do, I'd like to share three things that are hindering us today. Firstly, the way we think about employability, our attitudes, our behavior, is limited, held back by the social norms we've grown up with. We accept, for example, that it's perfectly normal to work like crazy and put other stuff on our life on hold in order to remain employable. Even when those things are our relationships, personal development, and even our health. It became clear that people understand that the social norms and psychological contracts that govern how we live today were developed for a previous era, but they're so ingrained in our thinking that most of us simply end up following them. Secondly, we have a tendency to use age as a proxy for stage in many areas of life. And when it comes to work, that leads to an expectation that the older you are, the more experience you should have, the more responsibility you should have, the more status and salary. And it's a model that companies have used for decades to manage the workforce and make decisions on things like pay scales, promotions, training opportunities. Many of us strive to fit our careers to that model, or at least make it look that way on our CVs, maybe. Smart companies are thinking about the future of work and what it means for their employees. And they're realizing it's not about predicting precise skills and qualifications that we're going to need, but about ensuring sufficient agility as an organization in order to thrive. Often the assumption is made that older workers are less able to be flexible and therefore remain employable than their younger colleagues. Against the backdrop of an aging society, that could spell disaster. Except, and this is important for us as individuals as well as for companies, it became clear that the person's ability to remain employable is not driven by their chronological age based on their date of birth but by their openness to experience. Openness to experience is a personality trait, and it refers to our ability to and willingness to make new experiences and learn from them. If you're someone who is, has a high openness to experience, and I presume all of you people in the audience today are these people, you're probably already doing lots of things to remain flexible in your approach to your working life. But 
And this is the third challenge. Many adults of all ages have unlearned how to be open to experience and are thereby unwittingly putting their own employability at risk. And the thing is, none of this has anything to do with age and everything to do with openness to experience. And that is good news. Because unlike our chronological age, openness to experience is something we can do something about. Having done this research, it's changed the way I think about employability. In fact, I no longer talk about employability as the ability to find a job on the job market, but rather employ agility, the willingness and ability to flexibly shape our working lives, to adapt to changing circumstances and thrive in them. And there are five areas that are important for that. Because I didn't want my thesis to stay locked up in a book on the Springer website, I've pulled them together into a framework, the Employee Agility Framework. An important part of the framework is an online tool which enables people to assess their own employee agility in a structured way. It's available online and it's free, and you're very welcome to try it for yourselves. If you do, you'll receive a confidential report with your personal results and recommendations of things you can do in these five areas to improve your employee agility. So, what are these areas all about? When it comes to learning, we tend to assume that our ability to learn will decrease automatically with age. But research, including work done by the Dynamics of Healthy Aging Research Group at the University of Zurich, have shown this is not the case. The human mind has a huge capacity to learn throughout our entire lifetimes, if it's kept in practice. And that's where the problem lies, because as adults, we spend a lot of time in our comfort zone, where we know how things work, and we don't need to learn that much. Over the time, we forget how to learn, and when we are then confronted with new stuff, with change, we doubt our ability to handle it. Learning agility is about relearning how to learn and a determination to use it rather than lose it. Networking. It's not about attending lots of wine and cheese events or about getting as many social media contacts as we can. But most of us tend to underestimate the value of our network, maybe until we start looking for a new job. If we can reframe how we think about networking whilst we're still employed, not only in the company we work in, but also in the industry, outside in other industries, online, and through our social network of family and friends, we can all make huge leaps in our employee agility. The way we work together and lead and collaborate is changing, as new business models emerge and technology infiltrates our jobs. Knowledge is no longer power, but the way we share knowledge and access knowledge is very powerful. And the kids growing up today, they know this stuff intuitively. My daughter was still in kindergarten when she said to her friend on the bus, let's ask my mum. She might not know the answer, but she's got Google in her handbag. <laughs> <laughs> Well-being is an obvious one. And there's plenty of advice out there about what we should be doing to manage our health. There's no one magic recipe. It boils down to understanding your own health and what it takes for you to be mentally and physically resilient. Most of us do a pretty good job of keeping our smartphones nicely charged. But when it comes to doing the same for our own energy levels, it's often a different story. And finally, career development is about letting go of that linear model and the outdated norms that hold us back, and decoupling the discussion from age, and finding ways to redefine what success means at various stages of our lives, and genuinely redistribute work, leisure, and education throughout our longer lives. Take a moment now to think about these areas in your lives. And as we're celebrating 10 years of TEDx Zurich today, let's think back 10 years to 2009. How have you developed in these areas since then? 
What decisions have you made? What advice would you give your younger self? Of course, the real question is what can you do now to ensure you have sufficient agility for the coming decades so that you can thrive in the years ahead? It's certainly something that my husband and I have taken to heart, and I'm pleased to say it's starting to rub off on how our kids think about work. When somebody recently asked my youngest daughter what she wants to be when she grows up, she said, First, I want to save the environment, and then I'll do something else. <laughs> I urge you to start driving your own employee agility and help those around you to do the same. Join me to spread this idea and create new norms so that we can create a world in which we have time to do things other than just work like crazy in our 30s and 40s, where we're not worried about becoming irrelevant in the workplace or written off as old in our 50s and 60s, and where we're working in a way that we are able and actually want to work well into our 70s and 80s. Thank you.